Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Today we got the spice episode. We got a little bit of everything. A sprinkle of DEI, some climate, migrants, fat people, and trans people. TGIF. <laughs> Welcome, you're here with the Big Sig Tig. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Boom, school district DEI trainer says American flag becoming a hate symbol. Employees resisting CRT should be fired. This is insane, a teacher who underwent the DEI training said about the messaging. All right, looks like a lawsuit incoming. Diversity, equity, and inclusion trainer spreading critical race theory in the public education system affecting thousands of teachers and administrators said that resistant employees who disagree with the concepts should be fired. According to her published work, Epoch Education CEO Dr. Nancy Dome called employees who don't accept notions including in CRT such as the existence of white privilege, a poison to culture and climate, and criticized equality in favor of equity. The DEI's firm YouTube videos, meanwhile, espouse CRT's tenets and indicate that colorblindness isn't sufficient. So what happens when you face someone who's actually resistant, doesn't believe white privilege or inequity exists? Dome wrote in her 2022 book, Let's Talk About Race, she proposed engaging in compassionate dialogue, calling it a cleaner way of interacting. If someone continues to resist that culture or climate after multiple interruptions, then you know they do not belong. Excluded. D-E-E. -E. You're out of here. Uh, yeah. If you continue showing up compassionately to conversations, but the other person refuses to give as much as they get, then sometimes that relationship is simply not a worthwhile use of your energy. Not incorrect at all, but with regards to peddling garbage into somebody's uh, mind, yes. Divorce can be a form of repair if you've made every attempt but simply cannot find a way for the relationship to move forward. Unfortunately, most people uh, engage in divorce before exhausting all possibilities. They're literally like, you know what, I'm done. I think I'm attracted to someone else. I'd like to do other things. I'm, I'm not even going to bother with this anymore because they didn't put enough thought into it to begin with. If a team member isn't willing to adjust, then repair may be to remove them from the team organization. Yeah, because everything should be uh, asymmetric. There should be no divergence, no oblongs, nothing like that. Everything should be just in line. We'll pat everyone on the back, say, you did a good job, DEI for life, high five, boom. And here is an image of the author, Nancy Dome. And yeah, there you go. She loves critical race theory. She hates white people. She is uh, most certainly a racist, in my opinion. Uh, I don't know her. I didn't read her book, so that is just an opinion. Anyway, we all know that like, you know racism exists, but it only exists because they keep telling you it exists. So you can tell your children that it exists, and then your children will be like, "Yeah, I'm this, and now I'm that because of this." It's all dog pile, you know. Like it's all nonsense. We're all the same. Remove the skin. We're the same within. Bottom line. All right, new internal memo to ICE. The ERO Executive Associate Director says that the CPB and the ERO will not question illegal immigrants who cross the southern border and are processed for expedited removal. While the limitation is in effect regarding their fear of return, if a non-citizen subject to the presidential proclamation is processed for expedited removal and manifests fear or an intention to apply for asylum or related protections while detained in ICE custody, the non-citizen must be referred to USCIS. One source saying, in other words, nothing has changed. So what the heck was all that? A lot to unpack. Well, basically, Biden came out with an executive order saying that they're going to limit the amount of uh, migrants crossing, illegal aliens, undocumented. Uh, but guess what? If the person just says, you know what? Uh, I need to seek asylum. I feel distressed. They're like, oh, oh, yes, well. Forget about being deported then, if that's how you feel. So absolutely nothing changed. And here we have Bill Milugin, or Mulligan, not sure. Yesterday was the first full day of President Biden's executive order barring asylum to most illegal crossers being in effect, and it had no impact on numbers. 
Per CPB resources, Border Patrol apprehended just about 4,000 illegal immigrants yesterday on par with the low 4,000s, mid to high 3,000s we've seen in recent weeks. Tucson and San Diego sectors were the top two yesterday with roughly 1,100 illegal crossings each, not counting gotaways, ones who got away. Uh, we shot the video uh, below yesterday afternoon in San Diego. Overall, I'm told there were roughly 5,500 CPB encounters yesterday, about 4,000 of which were illegal crossings, and another 1,500 were encounters at CPB ports of entry, which are largely releases via the CPB1 app. So Biden comes in and says, all right, we're going to shut it down, and then uh, first day, nothing. And the if you look closer at the memo, easily to... Uh, to seek asylum or just go ahead and say, I feel unsafe, please let me stay. Well, the US launches hypersonic nuclear missile capable of reaching Moscow in 30 minutes. Whoa, amid rising threats of World War III, we've covered a bunch of things like Putin just launched his space satellite that uh, is like a recognizant satellite. It's following a US satellite. Is it trying to extract data from it? They're talking about being able to implement lasers and direct energy weapons upon these satellites to knock out other satellites and potentially send a little something down to the planet. Well, Putin ally warns as U.S. raises World War III threat. And the Russia also said that they're going to give their allies weapons to use against uh, America if they feel necessary. So anyway, it's called the Minuteman III Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, the ICBM blasted off, Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. The weapon traveled more than 4,000 miles at speeds over 15,000 miles per hour to test a range on Marshall Island in the Central Pacific Ocean. Yeah, boom. So uh, China already has one of these, and I believe Russia does too, and they launched theirs, and nobody even knew it till they told them. So, U.S. is behind. Uh-oh, Dr. Pepper just passed Pepsi as the second biggest soda brand. If you don't know, Dr. Pepper is delicious. It is full of flavors. I don't know how many different flavors in it, 34 or something like that. I reference it kind of like Tutti Frutti. You know, like what is Dr. Pepper flavor? It's Tutti Frutti. And it is just knocked Pepsi out of second place. And of course, who's number one? You got it, Coca-Cola. Moving right along, first ever human death of bird flu strain H5N2. Okay. Confirmed in Mexico, says the World Health Organization. Well, the the hoopla going on is all about H5N1. Well, they just confirmed avian influenza A, H5N2, has taken the life of a human. It's only been reported in birds previously. May 23rd, Mexican health officials confirmed a case of the H5N2 bird flu strain in a 59-year-old resident state of Mexico who had been hospitalized in Mexico City. This is the first laboratory-confirmed human case of the infection with an influenza A H5N2 virus reportedly globally and the first avian H5 virus infection in a person reported in Mexico. So there you have it. Uh, big deal, no big deal. He's 59. Not good. First one to get it dies. Well, behind closed doors, Biden shows signs of slipping. Well, he shows signs of tripping, too, and that's on camera. Participants in meetings said the 81-year-old president performed poorly at times. The White House said Biden is sharp and his critics are playing partisan politics. Of course, rah, 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 rah. always like that. Point the finger. It's not us. It's you. Clearly, what you're seeing is uh, your mind is lying. Your eyes are lying. So your mind is lying. Your mouth's lying. Everything's lying. He's totally okay. He's not an old man about to die because that's what he is. He's an old man. He's in the twilight of his life. Uh, and we got a clip here of uh, Joe Biden just kind of doing a little something strange. A lot of people were saying there isn't a chair behind him, uh, but in fact, there is, and you can see it. Uh, let's just see what he does here. This is uh, French President Macron, his wife, who some believe is of the alt lifestyle. Go ahead and do your own research on that. And then we have Dr. Jill Biden. I believe her doctorate was given to her. He's reaching for his chair. He's like, should I? Guests, please welcome the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin. Well. Not sure what happened there. Distinguished guests, please welcome the Honorable Lloyd J. Austin. Well, it kind of looks like Jill was scratching her mouth there being like, Joe, Joe, stand up. We must stand up. Joe. Well, good save. 
But anyway, uh, the chair is behind him, and he's just trying to figure out. Like, he's an older fella. Like, he's probably like, okay, we get to sit down now. Great. You know what I mean? And uh, they're like, no, this is a process for veterans. You're going to remain on your feet, sir. Have some respect. World hits 12 straight months of record high temperature, but as warming continues, it'll be remembered as comparatively cold. Just like all of the other predictions they've had since 1932, certainly this one will be absolutely correct. The world has now marked one full year of back-to-back -back monthly heat records, the European Union's Copernicus Climate Change Service announced on Wednesday. It said last month the hottest May in record history. Recorded history. 12th consecutive month in which the monthly high temperature re record was broken. It was also the 11th consecutive month where the global average temperature was at least 1.5 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average. If that trend continues, it would mean the world is passing a major climate milestone. May's average temperature was 1.52 degrees above Celsius, the previous industrial average. <clears throat> Copernicus reported while the global average temperature from June 2023 to May 2024 was 1.6 three degrees celsius above the pre-industrial average hmm so they're saying extreme weather they're, the greening effect uh is not real uh there are some weird things going on with the weather though and there might be some anomalous thing going on down in the antarctic maybe we'll cover that on monday uh some weird things going on in antarctica with regards to spikes in geomagnetic uh, signatures whatever anyway then there's a whole bunch of crazy things happening all over the world immediately after is it related is it causal we don't know so yeah the how long have they been recording let's see here it doesn't say back this is only going back one year it's showing it's going up and down up and down one degree big deal one degree is nothing but on the global scheme of things Perhaps it is. They're saying that it's actually going to cause the whole world to end. We'll see. We'll keep you covered. Common sugar substitute linked to increased risk of heart attack and stroke. Yikes. Xylitol is a sugar alcohol that is found in small amounts in fruit and vegetables and is used in sugar-free gum, toothpaste, and baked goods. Uh, they had a problem with Eritol uh, last year. Yeah, if you ever go to the store and you see these candy, Russell Stover, I believe, have them. They're like sugar-free. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get me some of that chocolate. And you look at the back and you're like, oh, it does have sugar. It's alcohol. Sugar alcohols. What is this? Well, apparently it's not good for you. It's a sugar alcohol that found in small amounts in fruit and vegetables. Of course, they've extracted it and now they use it as an additive. Uh, it looks and tastes like sugar, but it's 40% fewer calories. Boom. Great. Well, guess what? Uh, it's going to jack you up, cause blood clots, strokes, all kinds of things. So many heart attacks, strokes occur in people who do not have known risk factors like diabetes, high blood pressure, or elevated cholesterol levels. The research team began studying sugar alcohols and found naturally in the human body to see if the compounds might predict cardiovascular risk in these people. Well, 3,000 participants, after overnight fasting, they found people whose xylitol levels put them in the top 25% of the study group had approximately double the risk for heart attack, stroke, or death over the next three years compared to people in the bottom quarter. Eww, what does that mean? It's all put into a model and they're predicting that it's possible. Have they followed up after three years and said, hey, look, yeah, 25% of them were dead. We were totally right. Don't think so. Rare and unusual cancers are emerging after the COVID pandemic and doctors fear an unlikely culprit is to blame. Hmm. Unlikely culprit. Let's dive right in on top of this. Doctors across the U.S., are reporting an alarming health trend in the wake of the COVID pandemic. Since about 2021, they've been noticing rare and unusual cancers in patients who shouldn't fit the bill. Many of them young and without any family history of the disease. What? And they're coming down with obscure forms of the disease that typically affect seniors in their 70s and 80s? So what could be happening to their immune system? Because that's clearly what it has to be, including hard to pronounce ones like uh, collagen carcinoma, Colon gene carcinoma, probably, uh, yeah, bile ducts. There you go. It's all up in your gallbladder by the look of it. Uh, there are other strange things happening, such as patients coming down with multiple cancers at the same time, huh? The pandemic forced people to isolate and put off preventative care measures that would screen for various types of cancers out of fear of being infected. Yeah, we kind of covered that yesterday, that there was an excess death. Not yesterday, sorry, the previous day, Wednesday. Uh, excess deaths across the world were up like 3.7 million and they couldn't really understand why and a lot of it was said like you know it's just you know we couldn't screen people we didn't know what was going on so it's just like you know people got sicker and that's what it was couldn't have been anything else nothing else like seriously but doctors do not believe this to be the primary driver of advanced rare cancer cases instead they think covid 
virus. COVID-19 virus is what's driving the uh, cancers. So uh, I don't know. They're coming out with this uh, stuff with Fauci and Daszak in the Congress. And, you know, it could be a lab leak. You know what I mean? I don't know what's going on. Pretty weird uh, that a virus would cause cancers. Yeesh. Dr. Kashyap Patel, a North Carolina oncologist, has seen the phenomenon firsthand. He saw a patient in his 40s in 2021 who had a rare cancer of the bile ducts, which transport fluid produced by the liver to small intestines, where it aids in the absorption and digestion of fats. This type of cancer typically affects people in their 70s and 80s. Then multiple other patients he met with were diagnosed with an array of different cancers, something he said he had never seen in his two decades of practicing medicine. Quite an extensive career. One couple... He investigated were Bob and Bonnie Crawl of Fort Mill, South Carolina, whom in a 14-month period were diagnosed with three types of cancer between them, despite having no family history of the disease. Mr. Crawl was diagnosed with rare chronic blood and bone marrow cancer, while Miss Crawl had a cancerous mass in her abdomen weighing eight and a half pounds, according to the Washington Post. Mr. Crawl later learned he had several of his neighbors had the same type of cancer. It's like a cold. It seems like everyone has it. Ha ha ha. No, it's not seems like everyone i wonder i got a question but i'm not allowed to ask it definitely not i wonder if he likes carrots right cdc data shows that more people are being told that they have cancer now and they were prior to in the pandemic 2021 9.8 percent of adults reported having ever been told by a doctor that they had cancer in 2019 that proportion of adults was 9.5 percent okay so it's off Viruses have been known to accelerate cancer since the 1960s. Some researchers contend that a quarter of all cancers worldwide originated with HPV, Epstein-Barr virus, and hepatitis B. Yikes. Well, that's what they thought. They contended. Uh, they cannot definitively rule out COVID vaccines as playing a role. But believe the evidence supporting the theory, uh, the virus theory, to be much stronger. Okay, so this is interesting, very interesting. They're, they're actually stating that they can't rule it out, the safety and efficacy. Lab tests suggest that coronavirus proteins can reawaken dormant cancer cells and fuel their growth, increasing the odds of being diagnosed with breast, stomach, and blood cancers. So what this, uh, are they saying that the virus, the spike protein in the virus, causes that? Hmm, well... I thought they used the spike protein in the mRNA vaccine and that the mRNA tells your body to keep producing the spike. And they're not exactly sure how much gets produced and uh, if it like goes away and how long. They're still studying all that. 2023 report in the Journal of uh, Biochemie detailed different means by which the coronavirus and the coronavirus can change genes that usually stop tumors from forming and cause widespread inflammation throughout the body. This inflammation might lead to the development of cancer cells in various organs, including the lungs, pancreas, and colon. Yeah, it all sounds probable. Possible, for sure. And the team of Colorado has began probing the possibility that the coronavirus brings cancer cells to life in mice. All right, cool. Well, they're studying it in mice. Mice are a good indicator. They're very similar anat uh, anatomically to humans, but their lifespan's shorter, so they can see how things progress and parlay that into a human. Preprint released in April showed that when mice who had cancer previously but recovered were injected with coronavirus, cancer cells multiplied and spread in the lungs. Yikes. So there you have it. Could be the virus. Could be something else. Don't know. Not going to say it. Going to move right on. We'll keep you posted, 100%. Americans deeply divided on issues involving queer children. I could totally imagine that. Well, Carrie Howell, who lives in rural Georgia, is the mother of a bisexual 13-year-old daughter and a 3-year-old boy whose car seat is his favorite color pink. Oh, no. Is that a signal? If either child comes out as transgender someday, she will not be upset in the slightest. I would get on the phone and start looking for doctors to support them, said Howell, 33-year-old automotive technician. I don't think there should be any laws restricting gender affirming care for any age. I don't. If there were more protections in place, then children would feel more confident about reaching out. Darcy Quimby, 56, a political independent from the Palm Desert area, sees the question as more complicated. Sure. Quimby said she previously identified as bisexual, but today is in a monogamous relationship with a man and thinks the LGBTQ plus community has become too vocal, too prominent, too pushy, and too obsessed with sexuality as an identity. 
There's now a new queer character every time you turn on the TV, she said, and kids are being swept up into thinking that being LGBTQ+, and transgender in particular, is a great new fad. It's something that you can just join into. It's not something you are born with and naturally feel. It's something you're exposed to and influenced to because you heard about it. It's not like, oh, I've felt so weird my whole life, and then when I heard about this, it made sense. It's like people are like, oh, what's that? I'm going to try that. Okay. You, well, you can change it, say the doctors. You can totally reverse all this. Just open up the coffers and fill them up with money. I find it hard to believe that there's many transgenders in the world. You know, true transgenders. Yeah, it's less than 0.1%. Way less. There are probably some kids who are truly transgender, but I think it's more of a phase. And unfortunately, this phase has dire consequences with some people who really just realize, wait, no, I really wasn't. And now it's irreversible. Quimby said, referring to bodily changes that can come from things like hormone treatments, which she opposes for children. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a divide. These are just two regular people, and they were asked the question, and one was like, 100%, I'm all about it no matter what. One who was actually part of the group, and is like, hey, listen, I grew up. I was involved with this, and now I'm older, and I grew out of it. And typically, most of them do, and uh, ones that believe certain things, they'll not be trans. They'll either be homosexual. That's typically how it goes. Anyway, moving right along, Americans can approve of LGBTQ plus people living as they wish, as most do. Do whatever you want. In your own house, we don't care. We'll come looking in your windows and knocking on your door saying, Arr. we're not the, uh, the, the uh, what is it, the HOA. All right. The support drops for trans people to poll shows. Well, let's see. Americans broadly support LGBTQ plus people living as they wish, with large majorities backing same-sex marriage, same-sex couples, raising children, and laws to protect queer people from job discrimination, according to a new nationwide poll for the Los Angeles Times. And that's kind of how I feel about it, too. Like, I don't agree with it. I don't believe in it. I believe that it's an indoctrination type of thing, propaganda going on. But whatever... To what I think, if you believe that life on earth is that, and this is exactly what you want to do, then go for it and do it, and that's fine. But don't be out there pushing. Like, I'm not saying you must be heterosexual, and you must read the Bible, and you must. It's like, I believe certain things, and I believe that there'll be certain outcomes if you follow certain paths, and that's it. I see your outcome. I see your path. My outcome's different, okay? I believe in procreation and believing in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and I'm going to go to heaven because of that. You're the opposite. You're ulterior to what I do. Okay? Alternative is LGBTQ+, two-spirit, whatever it is. And that's not about procreation. That's about sexuality as your identity. I disagree with that. So anyway, uh, most people do as well. The survey found a deep division on questions related to queer youth, such as whether children should have access to gender-affirming medical care. The poll done for the Times by NORC at the University of Chicago, paid for by the California Endowment, was designed in part to re-ask questions about groundbreaking survey on American perceptions of gay and lesbian people that the Times conducted in 1985. Excellent. It's about time for an update. 30, 40 years later... Okay, in 85, 72% of Americans said sexual relations between adults and the same sex were always or almost always wrong. Today, that's dropped to 28%. Wow. So instead of people believing it's wrong, well, they've removed religion, so a lot of Christian lapsed Christians out there. Muslims, I mean, if you did this uh, as a global survey, I wonder how it would come out. 1985, 64% said they would be very upset if their child was gay or lesbian. Now it's 14%. Yeesh. 1985, 51% said they favored laws protecting gay and lesbian people from job discrimination. In the latest poll, 77% do. So it's increased. Yeah. Well, 80% say they're either somewhat or strongly approve of gay or lesbian people living as they wish. That drops to 67% when asked about transgender and non-binary people. Yeah. Because they don't believe in it. And they believe that affirmation is insane for children. If you're an adult, go ahead. Lop and chop. Anyway. Moving right along, Bailey Ann, a man who pretends to be a woman, was just crowned Miss Maryland USA. Bailey hopes that this accomplishment inspires uh, more confused men to steal the achievements of real women. Why are women allowing this to happen? Yeah, so as you can see, she definitely like appears to be uh, like a woman with long hair and makeup. But uh, yeah, it's a man, and all of these other women here 
are just like, yes, girlfriend, yes. When really, deep down inside, I'm sure they're disappointed that they didn't win and a man did. All right, well, uh, 23-year-old Sarah Milliken crowned Miss Alabama in the National American Miss pageant. Milliken, who said her goal was just to make the top 10, nothing lofty about that, but congratulations for winning, has inspirational words for young women after her win. No matter what your body looks like, no matter where you come from, you can do anything you set your mind to. That's totally wrong, and that's a poor impression. Like, if your body is obese and large, can you climb the mountain? No, you cannot. They won't allow it. Can you do certain things? No, nature won't allow it. Doctors will tell you not to do it. You know what I mean? If you uh, don't have legs, can you run? Yeah, with prosthetics. Okay, like, come on. Anyway, I get the message. Good for you. Just making it to the top 10 was my goal. Yeah, no. I could leave the weekend saying I was better than I was a year before, and it's all about bettering yourself for me. Milliken will now move on to the Nationals and compete on Thanksgiving weekend. All right, well, let's just go ahead and have a quick look. And there you have it. Boom. Not sure if you guys noticed the placement of that crown kind of sloppy. I wonder if there's a little bit of spite in the blonde there, the previous winner, for uh, who is seceding her or usurping, perhaps. All right, if you don't think Miss Alabama won this fair and square, you're a far-right extremist, absolutely. And there you have it, you know, with another heavier set uh, lady. Listen, there's, it, it's a beauty pageant, okay? It's all based on attractiveness, and attractiveness is based off of symmetry. I'm not saying this woman's ugly. I mean, she looks quite pretty, quite jovial, you know what I mean? Like, very happy, but, like, what is the standard of attractiveness? It's in the eye of the beholder, and I behold unattractive. All right, there you have it, people. TGIF, I hope you enjoyed the uh, broadcast today. It had a little variety, a little spice of life. And remember, it's all up to you how the future ends. Sigma Tiger, signing out.